bro i want to move to windsor how much would it cost for me to live in the windsor ontario in 2023 whether as a renter or if you want to buy a home how much it's going to cost so those are the things we're going to discuss in this video namaskar this is aditya soma and welcome back to my channel if you're new here I'm a real estate investor and real estate agent here in Windsor, Ontario. And through this channel, I talk about Windsor, I talk about financial freedom, how to achieve financial freedom through investing because that's what I have done and my goal is to help you to achieve that. So if those are the topics you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions anything related to Windsor, real estate, investing, freedom, sales, blah blah blah. So, now let's get into the topic. the cost of living because you know now with the inflation lot of things has changed i made a video in 2019 if you haven't watched check that again the the cost of living actually changed quite a bit since then the average monthly payment on a new house was $1400 i asked him to tell us what it is today but it's gone up to over $3100 that's over a 100% increase uh the rents has gone up the grocery prices has gone up the mortgage interest rates has gone up a lot of things gone up even the gas price even the insurance home insurances and everything so you know what this is an updated video for that um i'm going to dive into every details again you know things will vary if you're a renter or or uh, owning a home or also like if you're a single person or a family or family of 5 or 10 i don't know again you know it all changes but i'll try to give my best to give a average uh, estimate you know based on for a family pull up your phone or your notes pen and paper make a note so let's first start with the major cost the biggest cost for anyone is the house so if you are renting in windsor a house an average uh, one bedroom apartment can be around 1100 but it can go up to 13 1400 even 1500 if it's a beautiful apartment for a two bedroom apartment average 1400 but again you know i have seen two bedroom apartments go for even 2000 dollars if they are beautiful got granite countertop got good size you know got more amenities things like that or if it's above ground or basement so i'm talking about average 1400 for a three bedroom um 1800 can go up even up to $3000 if you're renting a detached home with a double car garage with a more amenities so keep that in mind but if you are someone you know working have a full time job and can afford a home then in windsor average home price right now is around 554000 so for 554000 if you are getting a first time has a first time home buyer if you are paying 5% down again when you're paying 5% down you'll have a insurance the mortgage insurance the cmhc or genworth so that makes your payment actually go higher with a interest rate i'm calculating here with a you know 5.2% interest rate but again i um i my favorite website ratehub.ca you will see on the screen do your calculations you can change according to if you want to put more down to bring your cost down that can vary um and also sometimes you might be able to shop around and get better rates so this is just the average cost if you are buying a house of average home price 554000 your mortgage would be around 3225 dollars so 3225 dollars and the expenses that are related to the house these are some of the things people forget to add so make sure you make a note um first expense you must pay is taxes the second expense you must pay must i'm saying must for any house insurance home insurance not the mortgage insurance home insurance so taxes depends on where you're buying in the city um and uh, insurance typically depends on the size of the home and then utilities so if you're if it's a detached home or you know freehold where you're paying for all your utilities you have water bills you have waste water bills you have electricity you have gas so all this on an average together uh, in windsor that i have seen for a house of this average home price uh, anywhere you know 775 dollars give or take so approximately you need 4000 dollars for a house and on top of it the maintenance for the house you know if you're owning a home there is always 
unexpected expenses can come like you know a plumbing pipe broken or uh, you know something something damaged fridge is not working boiler is not working you know burner is not working this and that um so i always add extra funds for those maintenance two to three hundred dollars now coming to the second major expense is your vehicle again if you're some someone starting your career just now you know try to avoid um buying a, a bigger house or try to avoid buying a car if you can you know if you can take a bus your cost will be way lower because a bus pass probably hundred dollars in windsor probably hundred hundred and fifteen dollars whereas if you own a car now you have to pay the mortgage for the car let's say you have uh you own a, a average car like you know a honda civic nowadays nothing is less just mortgage itself is like if you're taking seven years five hundred dollars nothing less than that and car insurance on an average two hundred and fifty dollars and now the gas bill has gone up drivers are feeling pain at the pumps yet again prices are expected to climb this week and by the fall they're expected to reach close to two dollars a liter so probably again i'm throwing hundred hundred and fifty dollars per month for gas but again if you're someone like me or you know my agents probably it will be double or even triple of course you know cars have maintenance right oil change this and that on an average at least 50 dollars very conservatively 900 dollars at least for a basic car you can avoid this if you're just starting your career this is why i talk about financial freedom in the um in this channel quite a lot two years ago i had hundred thousand dollars debt yes minus bank balance and now i became a millionaire quote unquote american dream came true for me and at the end i'll give you an ideas how you can even bring down your cost half or even 70 percent less than what you have right now now the third mandatory expense is groceries of course you need food to eat right um, me and you know pretty much i have a family of four now five uh, probably we spend around like six hundred dollars when we have guests it will go up when we have long-term guests it can go up more but on an average five six people uh, six hundred dollars give or take um, if you're a single person you know i spoke to a couple of my uh, guys here you know my video guy my leasing guy they, they, they're single guys living in the apartment uh, they pay give or take three hundred dollars for a groceries you have to go out you are buying coffees dinners or maybe if you have a girlfriend you have to take out or if you have a boyfriend or if you're married you know if you don't take out your family for a movie or something or your kids to park ice creams all those things right like all the fun stuff so i'm putting very very conservative number here just i'm assuming you're a you're not too much outside eater at three hundred dollars number but again you know here this is where if you want freedom try to minimize your cost maybe bring it down to even hundred dollars that's where your commitment matters and of course another mandatory one in canada phone phone bills average fifty dollars but they can go up if you want more data this and that they can even go up to hundred dollars but if you're a family now spouse need a phone you know it can go up and if the kids also need a phone and plan probably you can end up paying 200 to 50 dollars just for the phone and other miscellaneous things you know health you never know when you have to go to clinic uh, if you're a permanent residence you know knock the wood you should not go anytime eat healthy and work out so you will stay healthy uh, but again you know life happens shit happens in life so i would say 100 200 dollars for you know some medicines this and that so if you add up all these things on an average for a family to own a home and a car and again if you're a family wife and husband both of you are working if both need car now the car payments can double right so do your math there but on an average what i can see with the current uh, the rates inflation rates your it it is costing at least six thousand to seven thousand dollars every month for a family to own a home so here are some of the ideas that i've been implementing from my beginning of real estate career house hack or airbnb why do you want to go for a house where you're just living and especially if you're someone don't have if at least one of your salary is not equal to your expenses then consider this is buy a home that has a basement suite or you have extra space where you can rent out for airbnb because you know if you have seen the average two bedroom even the basement is renting for 14 1500 dollars 
So you can bring down your cost. If you do it on Airbnb, you can even get up to $2,500, $3,000 every month. And if you have more space or if you buy a three unit property or four unit property, you live in one unit and rent out the others, you can even bring down your cost by 60, 70%. So house hacking is the concept. Check out my other videos. I have a lot of a lot more detailed topic on this how to house hack properly, how to find those kind of proper properties, you know, where you can literally close to live for free. Um, check out those properties. I'm not going to go deep dive into that topic. But again, think of that in mind. And or even if you're renting, maybe rent a three bedroom house. If you're a single or even a couple live in one bedroom, rent out the other bedroom sublease. Make sure your lease have an option to sublease because there is a lot of people looking for room rentals, roomies. You know, why do you wanna spend all the cost that is not gonna give you fun? What is real freedom? You know, if you have that extra funds, you can go have fun with your friends. You can go, you know, do other things that you're more passionate about. So that's what I believe in. Again, you know, let me know in the comments below how much is your cost of living every month. Am I on the point or am I too off, too on? Let me know in the comments below. If, you, if this is, was useful for you, make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you. Until the next video, check out the other videos. See you later.